Yeah, it's a good thing we do test recordings, considering the microphone was almost upside down from when I walked into it. I don't know, I, I suppose microphones do still record upside down as well as right side up. But it'd be a lot further away from my mouth, where all the wisdom spews forth from. <laughs> or the bullshit, depending on who you ask. Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, moan, call your mommy. You can shove your opinions up your ass. That way Obama's cock has something to keep it company. And don't forget, the ever-present, the most likely third possibility, you are wrong and I am right. That's how it usually turns out. I tend to be right when I say things. It's just, it's, it's an amazing talent I have. It's because I can just see through the bullshit in the world around me. It's really not that hard. Most of you can't do it because you're stupid. I can do it because I am the great one himself from the Cynical Libertarian Society. And this is Stating the Obvious the Weapons Platform from which I launch the nuclear tipped cruise missile of my intellect that just fucks up your world if you're a goddamn little statist because you're out there thinking oh oh it's such a wonderful world we have hope and change and we voted for obama and i can ki- I, we can kill people in foreign countries with flying robots or well, you're out there thinking oh we're gonna elect romy and we're gonna get him in office and then we're gonna show all those feminists we're gonna take away their abortion and we're gonna force everybody to believe in god and we're gonna shoot brown people to try to come over the border to get jobs and we're gonna kill people in foreign countries with flying robots yeah america fuck yeah and then i come along i come along and guided by nothing but the non-aggression principle guided by nothing but the idea of freedom guided by nothing but the idea that is fucking wrong to initiate I knew there was a word in there somewhere initiate aggression against other people all the time that there are no fucking exceptions I come along with that one idea and I just fuck your little fucking world up why? because I am the stone cold Steve Austin of freedom so fuck you and I said to fuck you. So we're going we're to start this off with a longer one. I am the great one himself. As I've said, the Single Libertarian Society on the internet, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com. You can email us at God. That's dog spelled backwards. God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com. In the control room is the lovely and adorable Randy. Today is still the 31st of August, 2012. Fuck yeah. America, fuck yeah. Spock, where's my ship? William Shatner, mode. Activate. Let's talk about let's talk about Apple. Not Apple's, but Apple computer. Some old news and some new news. Here's the old news. You know, I should just I should just say this right now. Before I forget, because as we were starting up, I thought about this. And and it's great because it, it represents the Cynical Libertarian Society way of thinking so much in that what I'm going to say here is is true and it's a brilliant metaphor for the way those of you who are medicated generation status think. And on top of that, it's also very offensive. And as anybody who's listened to this episode, listened to this episode, anybody who's listened to this podcast at least once knows Part of my goal in doing this is to fucking offend you. And, and I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to do an entire episode entitled Fuck You and Fuck Your Feelings in which I explain not just that I'm out to offend those of you who are statist, but explain why I want to offend you and explain why if you don't like being offended, you can fuck off. You know, and I mean, here's a very short version of part of that. It amazes me how you fuckers out there com- support murdering people. You support the state, the government, the military, the prison systems. You support those institutions of the state murdering other human beings. 
Yet when your little fucking feelings get hurt, not only is that is that the most tragic thing in your world, that your feelings have been hurt, but you actually want the state to make laws against people hurting your feelings and then enforce those laws with violence. Your worldview that your feelings are so important that other people should be murdered because of your feelings. That is sick. That, that is not, that is not uh, misguided or naive. That is sick. That is evil. That is mentally broken. This is why I fucking hate you people so fucking much. The idea that you, the knowledge that you know in your little tiny brain and heart that other people should die for hurting your feelings and you're perfectly okay with that. That's your idea of hope and change. Whether it's Republican hope and change or Democrat hope and change, that's the world you want to live in. You are sick little motherfuckers. That has, now, let me make my analogy before I get off track. Here's what I thought of as I was preparing for this episode and getting my ducks in a row. Most of the people I know in the medicated generation, that's people under the age of 30, for those of you who don't know that term, most of those people are simultaneously sucking three cocks. They're sucking Obama's cock. They're sucking the cock of the Apple Corporation. And they're sucking the cock of the Google Corporation. These people at the same time claim that they are anti-war and that they hate corporations and that they hate rich people. Of course, Obama is murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots and spending a shit ton of money on weapons. Apple and Google are both corporations which are run by rich people. And so when you when you so actively and passionately love those three factions of the state and then sit here and say you don't believe in war and you don't like corporations and you don't like rich people, it cracks me up. So here's the analogy that, here, here's the image that came into my mind is of course that's three, that's three cocks for you to suck. And it's really hard to get all of those. I was thinking about somebody trying to get all three of those cocks in their mouth at one time because what I was saying to Randy is that the only time the Obama fanatics take Obama's cock out of their mouth is when they want to slip Apple's cock in there. And then it occurred to me how lucky women are. Because women have a mouth, an ass, and a vagina. Those of you in the medicated generation who are female, you can take all three cocks at the same time. Why? Wow, you're so lucky. Men, obviously being discriminated against, this must be a case of sexism, men only have the two holes, the mouth and the ass. That means one of those cocks has to be neglected. It doesn't have a hole to go into. Now, of course, you can still give it a hand job or a reach around or whatever, but there's not a hole for you to get that third cock inside. Wow. I, I, think, we need to, I think we need to start a movement. I think we need a website, you know, thirdhole.org or something like that because it's just not fair for those of you in the medicated generation to be able to, for example, give Obama a blowjob at the same time Apple is fucking you in the ass. And, I mean, what's, what's Google going to do? I mean, just giving Google a reach around, it, re it really doesn't have that's the same impact, you know, for Google. And, I mean, they're a multi-billion dollar corporation, and you hate corporations, and you hate rich people. So you really need to, to work harder to accommodate Google. So I, I hope that was offensive. I hope it was very, very offensive to everybody who heard it, especially those of you who hate rich people and hate corporations and buy every fucking product that Apple puts out and use Google to control all the information that comes into your life. I mean, I hope that offended you. I really do. Because you deserve to be offended because you're stupid. You're very, 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 very stupid. Old news. Apple making iPhones by exploiting Chinese workers. Oh, wait. Before we do Apple, let's do that. I'm going to do this really quick one. <clears throat> A six-year-old San Francisco boy was accused of sexual assault for touching his best friend's groin while roughhousing, a, high, a school principal made the charge 
in suspending the first grader, his mother threatened to sue and had his record cleared. Child psychiatrist Stuart Lusting said schools often overreact because such situation overreact in such situations, quote, because of the legal environment, unquote. So two six year old children in San Francisco, California, the People's Republic, the the most enlightened state in the Union. Two six-year-old children are roughhousing on the playground. One of them touches the other child's groin. And this is sexual assault. However, had that same six-year-old child gone to the airport to get on an airplane, a 42-year-old man could touch that child's groin and get paid for it. And we wonder why our children are fucked up. I can't figure it out. I, I, I just, I'm, I can't, I can't figure this out. The part I can't figure out is why. Why is this so obvious to me? And yet so many of you out there with those three cocks, trying to manage these three cocks of Google, Apple, and Obama, why is it you can't look at that and figure out there's something wrong with paying 40-year-old men to touch 8-year-old children's groins? But when one 6-year-old kid touches another 6-year-old kid's groin on the playground while they're playing, it's sexual assault. Oh wait, I know the answer. It's because you're sick. It's because you're mentally broken. It's because you're a statist. It's because you hate other people's freedom and you hate their freedom so bad that you're willing to sacrifice the freedom of yourself and everybody else just to make sure that two six-year-old children on the playground don't touch each other. All right, back to the third cock. Apple making iPhones by exploiting Chinese workers. This is not new news. I think everybody's heard now. I mean, this is something I've been talking about, not so much on stating the obvious, but in my life for a long time. Yes, uh, the stuff is made by the Chinese slaves. You know, I remember reading this thing about how the guy went to the Apple factory, and it's like the middle of the night, and they wanted to make a batch of iPhones that had some kind of modification. So they just wake up the workers in the dormitory at the factory and just herd them out onto the floor and you make this batch of iPhones just like that. I mean, these people are in here sleeping and shit and you just wake them up and put them to work and probably paid them a dollar and 75 cents. And of course, people celebrate Apple because, oh, and they're all liberal Democrats and oh, they, they so care about foreign countries and poverty and all this other shit. Somewhere around here, in the pile, I'm going to get to it, I'm going to talk about this extensively one of these days. There, there's an article from National Geographic, not exactly a right-wing Tea Party publication, about how much of the, what do you call it, the, the rare minerals that are needed to build electronic devices come from Africa, and about how much of those, how many of those minerals and elements are mined by what is sometimes literally, sometimes practically, nothing but slave labor. You know, if it wasn't for these slaves in Africa, all of these minerals used to build all these devices that Apple sells to all of you dumb fucks that hate corporations and hate rich people would either not exist or they'd be a lot more expensive. So let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this. We'll do some commentary because that's what I do. Looks like the what? All right. Looks like the wizards from Cupertino, whatever the fuck Cupertino is, I don't know, have a few skeletons in their closet in China," said Thane Rosenbaum in the DailyBeast.com. Just as Apple's shareholders were celebrating record profits last week, and remember, this is a while ago. This is because I do things from the from the past. This is from February 2012. We're going to talk about Apple's. Uh, record. A- Apple recently, this is just because of the Apple, some s- Apple Samsung lawsuit, which Apple apparently won, which is what we'll talk about next. Apparently, Apple stocks have fucking reached their highest, I don't know if it's their highest ever or their highest something. I remember seeing it somewhere. Anyhow, Apple sued the fuck out of another corporation 
because the other corporations stole their ideas, like uh, a touch screen and shit like that, which, yeah, whatever. And anyway, so because they, you know, and now their stock has soared. And then people sit there and go, well, why do we live in a society where everybody sues everybody? Well, gee, I don't know. When you're a multi-billion dollar corporation run by rich people selling products to rich people and you sue somebody else for bullshit and then you win and your stocks go up, gosh, I don't know. Why do we live in a country where lawsuits are encouraged? I can't figure it out. I'm baffled. I'm baffled by this. All right, here we go. The New York Times published an expose describing how Chinese workers assembled the 37 million iPhones and 15.4 million iPads Apple sold in those three months at the sprawling Foxconn plant in Shinizhan. That's how I'm going to say it, which is probably wrong. Shinizhan. An army of more than 200,000 workers puts the components together by hand, silently working 12-hour shifts six days a week while standing up. Now, if you tried to have people work 12-hour shifts six days a week standing up in the United States, liberal Democrats who can't stop sucking Apple's cock would go crazy. Oh my God, they'd fucking go insane. They'd have to get Obama in there and shut that down. Those people would have rights, and we'd have to, we'd have to, that corporation, oh my God, people would go berserk. There'd be all kinds of shit on the internet talking shit about the corporation. There'd be YouTube videos. There'd be whiny little liberal Democrats. There'd be online petitions. There'd be people posting fucking updates on Facebook. Because, of course, that's what substitutes for actually getting off your ass and doing anything today is changing your fucking profile picture on Facebook. I fed hungry children by changing my profile picture on Facebook. Bang! Oh, if only I did not believe in the nonviolence principle, I could kill those people. The only, the only, the only, uh, let's say the only hope I have left is that those people will just die naturally, but sadly they will not die naturally before they reproduce. All right, so yeah, I mean, there it is. There, there's your wonderful corporation that you love so much. Their pay, back to the article, their pay, about $17 a day. Can you imagine? American worker. We, can, you, can you imagine trying to pay somebody $17 a day in the United States? Oh my God. The liberal motherfuckers and the conservative, well, eh, yeah, conservative motherfuckers too. The Apple fanatics would shit their pants. They sleep, back to the article, they sleep in cramped corporate dormitories on side-by-side bunk beds. At least 19 Foxconn workers have killed themselves, most by throwing themselves off roofs. In response, factory bosses hung nets from the roofs and balconies to deter jumpers. Now, and it's, it's, it's made into this big deal about how many American soldiers come back from the war and kill themselves. And I'm not saying that's not an issue, it shouldn't be looked at, blah, blah. All I'm saying is, Look Look at all the excitement over this is how many people come back from the war and commit suicide. Well, where's the articles about this is how many people work in Apple Corporation's slave factories in China and kill themselves? Why is it the liberal media, which is controlled by corporations and rich people who use Apple products, don't talk about that? Oh, wait a minute. Did I just answer my own question? I think I did. Let's go back to the article. Apple customers face a stark moral dilemma, says Peter Cohan in Forbes.com. Do they keep buying and fetishizing Apple's sleek, miraculous products now that they know the human cost of making them? Or are they willing to boycott Apple to stop the carnage? I think since this is you know, from February 2012, I think we know the fucking answer. The day I read this, I knew the answer. People who fetishize, and it is indeed fetishizing. I'm going to talk about that in my upcoming series about the medicated generation and too much internet use and too much technology and all this other shit. I'm going to make, there is going to be a long, long, long series about this because I have so much fucking material. It is fetishizing. And no, they're not going to stop buying. You know, it's just like I said in a couple of podcasts ago about how Obama could, you know, Ass fuck an eight-year-old boy on national television and people would still vote for him. It's the same thing with Apple. It's the same thing with Google. 
That's why I single these three things out as the three cocks that those of you who are left-wing statists can't stop sucking. Apple, and th- there, there's nothing Apple can do that's going to stop you from buying their products. And there, there's a number of reasons for this, but part of it is just because as left-wing statists, you're all so insecure and you're also incompetent and you're also incapable of creating your own meaning in life that you need Apple products to make you feel like something. You know, it's part of this cult. It's part of your need to belong in something. And since you don't have any friends, because as a statist, you can't have any real friends. Because remember, a statist is somebody who, when push comes to shove, is always going to be willing to have other people who disagree with the statist murdered by the government and is going to support that. So when other people, it's like I have friends, I'm making quotes in the fingers with my air, quotes in the air with my fingers. When I say friends, I mean, I have friends that I, I associate with and blah, 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 but they're statist. I recognize that when push comes to shove, they will support the government murdering me. They will support the government murdering other people. They right now actively support Obama murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots. I understand that while I can you know, hang out with these people and do business with them and drink a beer with them and do favors for and help them out, I understand that when push comes to shove, when the shit hits the fan, these people are not my friends. So when you're a statist, you can't have real connections with other human beings because as a statist, you believe that other human beings can and should be killed when you want them to die for whatever reason you want them to die for. So it's impossible for you to have a deep relationship with another person. How the hell this was tied to Apple? I don't, oh, now I remember what the point of that was. That's why you can't stop buying Apple products. Because you, as just an entity of yourself, you have no meaning, you have no significance, you have no confidence. You need to get those things from an outside source. That's why you buy Apple products. So you can hold up your Apple product and say, look, I have an iPad. Look how cool I am. I'm one of you. That's why you support Obama. So you can say, look at me, I believe in hope and change. I, you know, Obama is me and I am Obama because I by myself am nothing. I, without Obama and Google and Apple, you're nothing. And I know people like that. Literally, if you took from their lives, Apple, Obama, and Google, they would be nothing. They would be nobody. And sadly, these people are allowed to participate in the political process. Hence the reason that right now we have a presidential election and our choices are the Messiah or the Mitzi. We're not going to talk about the presidential election other than to say that it's a joke. And to say that I still have not investigated the claims that there were shenanigans at the Republican National Convention that screwed Ron Paul over. But gosh, as I said before, I'm so shocked. I am so shocked that there were shenanigans at the Republican National Convention. Who'd have ever guessed? Oh, my God. But remember, your vote counts. Oh, yeah, your, your vote is really fucking important. Be sure you get out there and vote. Okay, let's go back to the article and make fun of Apple some more because the presidential elections have nothing to do with how much Apple sucks dog balls. Back to the article. Quote, If you really wanted to help the workers at Foxcom, said Tin Warstall, also at Forbes.com, Go buy another iPhone. $17 a day is good money in China, which is why a million workers have gone to Foxconn and, quote, voluntarily signed up to work for those wages, unquote. Assembling. (coughs) Excuse me there. All right. Voluntary signed up to work for those wages, assembling high-tech products for a slew of U.S. corporations, including HP, IBM, and Dell. If you're going to boycott Apple said Brooke Crothers at CNET.com, then you should boycott everything made in Chinese factories, including furniture, charcoal grills, nickel, cadmium batteries, and a host of other inexpensive consumer goods. The sad reality is that, quote, human-intensive mass production is ugly, unquote, and always has been, from the American Industrial Revolution to Japan's manufacturing boom in the 1960s. If you look inside any high-volume factory now or then, 
quote, you'll get sick watching the sausage get made, unquote. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with anything in that paragraph because there's truth to that. It is certainly not only Apple Corporation that you know hires workers in foreign countries and pays them less than somebody working in the United States would make. Of course, the reason the people in the foreign countries make less than they do when somebody doing the equivalent job in the United States is because in the United States, the state would force the corporation to pay them more. The reason I'm ragging on Apple for this specifically is because of the fact that the left-wing statists who worship Apple are the same people who claim all this moral high ground. You know, I mean, there, there's a there's this difference between going... Uh, how should I put it? Let's put it this way. There's a, what, what I do, when I go out and I buy an electronic product, which I don't buy them very often because unlike people who own Apple products, I'm not rich. But like when I went out and bought my netbook computer, I was fully aware that it was probably made in China by people not making a lot of money. I was fully aware that some of the minerals and elements in that thing were mined in Africa by slave labor who had guns pointed at them. I did it knowing those things and not running around trying to fucking moralize and philosophize about how much better I am than everybody else because I want to ban guns and get insurance corporations to pay for birth control and hate rich people and hate corporations. That's the part about the left-wing statist that pisses me off so fucking, fucking much. It's not the fact that you own an Apple computer. It's the fact that you buy every product Apple puts out. Every time there's a new phone, new iPhone, you have to go buy another one. And at the same time, you can't shut up about the destruction of the environment. I mean, every time one of those things is manufactured, a little more environment dies. Those minerals come from strip mining, okay? Strip mining does not cause trees to spring from the ground. All of, did I say chemicals? I mean, if I said chemicals, I mean elements. All of those rare earth, that's the proper term, rare earth element. My brain finally kicked in. Those rare earth elements that are mined by slave labor in Africa, they have to be extracted from the ore by using toxic chemicals, which are then dumped into the environment. But, oh, you care so much about the environment, and you hate corporations, and you hate rich people so much, just not enough for you to just stick with your iPhone 4 and not run out and buy a new iPhone 5. And it's the old hypocrisy argument, which, you know, in the philosophy classes at CSU, you'd always hear from the professors with their PhDs how hypocrisy doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the environmentalist, left-wing, statist wackos go out and buy new devices from Apple. They're still right about the fact that the environment is being destroyed by corporations, which is kind of like saying it doesn't matter if I go out and rape women as long as I believe that raping women is wrong. You know, it doesn't matter if the Catholic priest fucks another eight-year-old boy as long as the Catholic priest just knows that fucking eight-year-old boys is wrong. It's not your action. And all of these, all of these statists, and trust me, every fucking philosophy professor I've ever had, the ones I like and the ones I don't like, personally, intellectually, professionally, every fucking one of them has been a statist. Every single one of them has had the same attitude that it doesn't matter what you do. It only matters what you think. As long as you believe in global warming, it's okay to destroy the environment. As long as you hate corporations, it's okay to buy the corporation's product. As long as you believe that slavery is wrong, it's okay to reap the benefits of slavery. And so, hey... As long as you believe that child molesting is wrong, you can still molest children. It's okay. Next paragraph. Conditions need not be that ugly, said Heather Malik in the Toronto Star. Apple has gotten filthy rich from sweatshop labor, amassing $100 billion in available cash. 
Now, let me jump in a minute. I, I love this next part. Listen to this. This is, oh my God, this, 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 this is this is brilliant. And the only thing le- more brilliant than what I'm about to read is the analysis I am going to give you of what I'm about to read. Listen to this. Apple has gotten filthy rich from sweatshop labor, amassing $100 billion in available cash. Why not charge a little more for its products and spend that money improving the industrial hell of its Chinese contractors? Why not charge a little more and do something to help the Chinese workers. Notice the question isn't, why not spend some of the 100 billion of cash you have to help them? Notice how we don't want to do anything. The media, the part of the state, this fuckwad representative of the media branch of the state, doesn't want the corporation to reduce its profits to help the slave labor. No, no, no. They want the corporation to raise its prices so that its profit margin stays at $100 billion and then spend that to help the slave labor. Because we don't want to cut into the profits of the corporations. Well, no, we can't do that. That's not going to benefit the state. I mean, it, 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 I'm speechless at how fucking sick that is. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything else I can even say about that. And if for those of you who don't really get what I'm saying, who don't understand the distinction or the difference or why that's important... Please go go jump off a roof. I mean it. If I I'm not I'm not I'm not violating the non no encouraging other people to kill themselves does not violate the non-aggression principle. We can argue about that all day long. Thanks for asking though. Where was I? The New York Times estimated that improving wages and conditions at Foxcom to US standards would add only 60 making sure I get this number right. Wow. The New York Times estimated that improving wages and conditions at Foxconn to U.S. standards would add only $65 to the average cost of an iPhone. Better still, said Memphis Commercial Appeal in an editorial, bring those jobs back home. (laughs) Again, we've already explained why those jobs aren't going to come back here because you can't treat people like... And again, it's like that will only add $65 to the average cost of an iPhone. Notice how it doesn't say it would reduce the profit margin on the iPhone by $65. Again, you see it. See, the price of the iPhone isn't going to stay the same and the corporation spend more money to stop treating people like slaves. No, no, no. The corporation needs to raise the price to stop treating people like slaves and pass that cost on to the consumer, to the middle class, the so-called middle class. As I pointed out, only rich people have Apple products, right? And actually, it's it's not true that only rich people have Apple products. A lot of people buy their Apple. So here's the brilliance. Think about this. Think about this. Think about, fuck, fuck, fuck. I am so fucking brilliant. Okay, where do I even begin? Because it's like an endless loop. I have to think about where to break into this. So the medicated generation is brainwashed by the education arm and the media arm of the state to believe that having an Apple product makes you cool. So they go out and they buy those. Now, Apple is manufacturing these products using slave labor. But so Apple finally decides, well, we're going to stop treating them quite like slaves. We're going to create better working conditions, give them a pay raise, blah, 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 blah. We're going to bring them up to U.S. standards. So that's going to cost us an additional $65 per phone. So instead of cutting, instead of Apple cutting its profit margin by $65, they raise the price by $65. People continue to buy the product. Now, when you buy the product, you pay sales tax on it. The amount of sales tax you paid just went up. That's more money going to the state. That's more money for the war on drugs. That's more money for the war on terrorism. That's more money for the border patrol. That's more money to kill people around the world. Then, 
for the people who don't have the actual cash to buy the iPhone. Those people, they buy it on their credit card. So now the charges on their credit card are $65 more. So they're paying additional interest to the credit card corporation, sometimes known as a bank, but yeah, whatever. We'll call them banks. They're really some of the most evil institutions in the universe. So now you've got an additional $65 on your credit card that you're paying interest on to the banking corporation. And all of this money just goes right back into the corporations, right back into the government, right back into the state, right back into enslaving and murdering people. And all the time, you're running around with your three cocks, Obama's cock, Apple's cock, and Google's cock. And you're talking about how open-minded you are and how tolerant and how diverse and how you're opposed to slavery and how you love equality and how you've got hope and change and how you hate rich people and how you hate the 1% and how the 99% need to rise up and how you need to occupy and blah, blah, fucking blah. And the whole time you're propping up with your actions and your beliefs. And the whole time you're supporting with your money and your economic activity. And the whole time you're buying into, via the propaganda given to you by Google and by Apple and by Obama, the whole time you are the platform on which the state rests. You are the source of the power that allows the state to treat these people like slaves. You are the source of the power that allows the state to murder people in the drug war, to murder people in the war on terror, to fucking touch six-year-old boys' penises in airports. You, the fucking statist, the emotionally, psychologically, mentally inferior piece of shit who cannot recognize the supremacy of the non-aggression principle. You, are the piece of shit that makes all of this possible. All because you need those three cocks in your life. Because without them, you're nothing. Nothing. Back to the article. And that's not going to happen, said Jordan Wiesman in the Atlantic.com. Manufacturing Apple products in the U.S. simply isn't possible, not only because of labor cost. China has become a global hub of electronics manufacturing with a vast supply chain of factories making tiny screws, glass screens, and other crucial component parts. In addition, the U.S. lacks enough engineers with mid-level technical skills. Despite our constant attempts to get everybody into college and talk about how great college education is, but that's because all these people go to college and they get fucking degrees in shit like journalism and ethnic studies and political science. All right. The U.S. lacks enough engineers with mid-level technical skills to oversee a high-tech production line like Apple's. China graduates 600,000 engineers every year compared with 70,000 in the U.S. For better or for worse, the iPhone, the iPad, and the whole glittering array of Apple products will continue to be made in China. Wow, how's that public education system? Of course, we're too busy, you know, what is it, accusing six-year-olds of sexual assault for touching each other. We don't have time to teach people shit like engineering. We're too busy keeping track of how many times a semester a child leaves the class to go take a piss so that we can penalize them by making them stay after school. We don't have time to teach people engineering skills, not in our public education system. Oh, fuck no, 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 can't fucking do that. Because that would be practical, that would be useful. That would not be degrading, which is the point of the public education system. I'm not... Right. Mm. Some, <laughs> Randy, shoot me with a tranquilizer dart so I don't go off on the public education system again. All right. Up to the recent news. Wait, so let me... All right, now, 
let me throw out some quick things real quick before I'm going to read a editorial out of the local communist newspaper from CSU. But this was interesting. So I did some Google, did some Googling to rustle up some more information about the Samsung and Apple thing. So apparently the this same suit was happening in Japan and according to this article the court in Japan ruled on Friday that Samsung did not steal Apple technology. So this is interesting that Samsung stole Apple's technology in the United States but not in Japan even though it's the same products in both places. Hmm. I wonder the court in the United States is controlled by the government. The government is controlled by the corporations. The corporation with the most money between Apple and Samsung would be Apple. And Apple won the case. Hmm. Yeah, it's like saying it's like saying if I killed somebody and I'm found and there's witnesses and I'm standing there killing this person in front of a thousand people and in America I'm found guilty of murder but in Japan I'm not. I mean, I either did or I didn't, especially when there's witnesses. If this case really has actual significant evidence that means something, I mean, Apple either did, I mean, excuse me, Samsung either did or did not steal from Apple. How can it be that Samsung stole from Apple in one country but not in another. That should be a clue, except that most of you out there are too stupid to get a clue. Where's the other? Is this the? Oh no, this is the picture where it shows that before the iPhone, the Samsung products didn't look like an iPhone, and after they did. So I mean, basically, Apple sued Samsung for making products that looks like its products. Has anybody noticed that like all houses look alike? Has anybody noticed that all laptop computers look alike? Has anybody noticed that all automobiles basically look alike? I mean, you can fucking sue somebody and get a million dollars or whatever it is, which, which let's keep in mind is chump change. For even for Samsung, I mean, the, the, it's chump change. Okay, it's not even the principle of the amount of money or any shit like that. It's the principle of the fact that apparently if you're Apple Corporation, so many people are sucking your cock that in the United States you can sue another multi-billion dollar international corporation for making products that look like yours. I mean, it, it's products all look alike. DVD packaging all looks alike. Televisions made by different companies all look alike. I mean, if, if you can sue somebody for making a product that looks like your product, get ready, man, because there's going to be more of these. This is nuts. Where's the other thing I wanted to touch on? So, yeah, so this is, a, let me read this real quick. This is from somebody on some website on Forbes.com. It doesn't matter who it is. I don't give a shit. And the title of this is why the Apple v. Samsung verdict is a big mistake. The first paragraph says this. When I first bought an iPhone, I thought, how beautiful and sleek. In fact, the phone was so sleek, it kept sliding out of my hands. Like most people who do not carry a handbag, I had to buy an ugly black plastic cover to stop me dropping it. My iPhone resided inside that case where nobody could see its sleek, rounded edges. To my surprise, those edges made up part of the recent Apple vs. Samsung infringement action. I say surprised, but I mean astonished. How can anybody win a billion bucks for a design error? Or for that matter, being a trendsetter. So the fact that the phone had round edges is something that Samsung lost this case over? I mean, this is, this is fucking mind-boggling to me. Almost as mind-boggling as the fact that those of you who hate corporations and hate rich people are going to be happy about this. All right, make that go away. Let's read this bullshit here. All right. And when I say bullshit, I should say... Uh, so anyway, this is written by Hamilton Reed, senior computer science major, blah, blah, blah. I pretty much agree with what he says in here, but this is a good jumping off point for discussions. So dangerous precedent set by Apple, Samsung suit. Samsung suit, Samsung suit, Samsung suit. 
The verdict for a landmark technology case was heard Friday in the in the U.S. courthouse and federal building in San Jose, California. There it is. There's the People's Republic of California yet again. God, would it please fucking fall into the ocean? The two plaintiffs were the smartphone giants Apple and Samsung. For those not in the know, Apple and Samsung have been embroiled in a lawsuit for more than a year now with regard to various patent and design infringements by both parties pitted against each other. And so, yeah, let me point out, too, that Samsung apparently was also suing Apple. So it's not like I I don't want to make it out like Apple is the only culprit here. Okay, I want to be very clear on that. I'm not saying Apple is the only evil party here. Okay, the government is involved. They're evil. Samsung is involved. They're evil. The court system is involved. Evil. It's not all Apple's fault. But I'm singling out Apple because Apple is the only of these entities that those of you in the medicated generation can't stop sucking their cock. Okay, Apple is one of your holy trinity of Apple, Google, Obama that you worship so much. That's why Apple is being singled out. None of this should be interpreted as I support Samsung or, you know, Samsung was right, Apple was wrong, any bullshit like that. The other thing, of course, that's in danger here uh, is, is the free flow of information, which you people claim you support. I mean, I get, seriously, 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 if you can fucking sue another product manufacturer because they make the corners on their product round like you did... Holy fuck, do you realize that all CDs are round? So the first person to ever manufacture a CD or a DVD could sue the other ones because their CDs are round. It's the same shape as ours. Apple fired the first shot, claiming that the design of many Samsung smartphones and tablets are essentially copies of the popular iPhone and iPad, while while Samsung has counterclaimed that Apple's iPhone and iPad utilize technologies developed by Samsung without paying for the right to use them. Let's keep in mind that, first of all, when you create a design or an idea or something, something that's successful, yeah, other people copy it. When the first company, whoever it was, that came up with, hey, let's make a computer so small that you can carry it around with you and call it a laptop, other people saw that and copied it. No shit. That's what happens when you come up with a good idea. Other people copy it. Let's also remember that for Apple, for Apple has a clear history of stealing shit from other people. For those of you not in the know, the very short version of this is Apple did not invent the GUI. Apple did not invent the mouse. Apple did not invent the idea of clicking on an icon. That was invented by Xerox. Apple, very now that it's open, oh, now that it's open, now that it's happened, it's in the past. You, there's all kinds of stories about this. It's been in the you know, Apple is very open about the fact that we stole this from Xerox, and they did. Uh, then Apple got in with Microsoft for a while there. Stole shit from Microsoft. Apple is known for stealing software and ideas from other corporations. This is not news. But yes. Oh, great. Thanks. And the and the, the uh, Randy's just informed me we're running out of time. This is not going to happen. God damn it. There's going to be a part two. I love it. All right. Here we go. Oh, stealing from the other corporations like Xerox and Microsoft without paying them. After a very short four days, the jury returned with their verdict. Samsung is guilty of almost all the patent infringements Apple put forth, while Apple has been found guilty of literally nothing. Personally, I find the whole thing rather absurd. Looking over the claimed patent infringements put forth by Apple, most of the patents related to design elements seem rather self-apparent. For example, one pattern, some one pattern, one patent involves, quote, double tapping to enlarge and center portions of an electronic document. Unquote. To me, this seems akin to filing a patent for, say, double-clicking an icon and that icon launching the program associated with it. Or, it would be like if one car company sued another for including a pedal that could be pressed to provide gas to the car engine to increase the car's acceleration. I mean, how can, how, what can I say you know, better than that? I mean, you're, you're fucking... Apple is fucking suing people because they came up with a phone where when you touch something, it it activates, it enlarges it. I mean, you're are you fucking kidding me? 
and you're not. That's the scary part, is that this is not a joke. We live in a world where one corporation can sue another corporation. Now, there's, you know, and there's always a point that both corporations are products of the state and both corporations are evil and both corporations shouldn't exist. But we have corporations suing each other because you tap on something with your finger and it activates. Or because your product has round corners and our product has round corners. Why, don't, why didn't Apple fuck? Maybe they did. I don't know. Apple should sue Samsung because Apple's telephones are black and Samsung's telephones are black. It's ridiculous. No, hang on. I'm just, I'm, I, don't worry about dead air. I'm on this, Randy. If anybody doesn't like the fucking dead air, they can stop listening. Fuck them. I'm thinking. I'm looking at this article. I want to see if there's anything else in here I really need to read. Uh, you know, this is a good point. I mean, you know, Steve Jobs is dead. What the hell is Apple going to do now? Because their messiah, their version of Obama is no longer with them. I, th- I think there probably is some panic at Apple. This is not, this is me theorizing. This is not out of the column. I think there's some panic at Apple. I think this is probably a part of that. With Steve Jobs gone, I mean, where the, I'm, mostly I'm doing this, Randy, because I do not want to do a part two to this one. You know, blah, blah, blah. Samsung has a billion fines leveled against it. Let's see, blah, blah, blah. And we'll essentially have to scrap all current productions of their cell phones until they can remove all the infringing elements. Again, you know, it, it's, it's, the money is nothing to Samsung. I don't have that much sympathy for the corporation. I, that's the thing I think needs to be clear here. This is not about sympathy for Samsung. This is about how fucked up our society is and how fucked up the state is, the state that you support as a statist. Where people, where, 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 you, where corporations, they're not people, they're corporations, can sue other corporations because their products have round corners. This is the world you have created. Ow! That was me hitting an object with my hand. This is the world you've created. It's the world you support. It's the world you want. And the fact that you are the future of America and the smartest generation ever scares the fucking shit out of me. In the trash can, done and done.